Welcome back, guys. All right, so check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give a demonstration here. I've got this uh, paint program open, and I'm just going to kind of demonstrate how this EFI works, um, kind of in the back end, because if you don't know how that works, well, then you might get confused as to what the EFI actually is. So first off, when you first boot up the computer, all right, you basically have the BIOS. So we're just gonna go ahead and type this in. So we're just gonna say, this is our BIOS. And let's put that up there, right there. Yeah, there we go. And let's say, oh, let's go blue. And in the BIOS, you have legacy and you have EFI. All right. Now in the legacy mode, and we're going to use uh, that right there. In legacy mode, you have the 16-bit boot, um, you know, sector, basically, all right? And that is in the first 512 bytes of your physical hard drive. So when you go to boot up on legacy mode, this is basically what you're doing. That is your first sector, it's your boot sector, and you will also, if you watch any kind of operating system development tutorials that are out there, and they're everywhere right now, you, they will talk about 0xAA55 as the boot signature to be able to boot up. All right, that is what the actual, um, you know, legacy boot mode is all about right there. But in the EFI, we don't, use, we don't use this at all, all right? So EFI and how it works is much different in its approach. The EFI basically has uh, three parameters to it. So I'm just going to do that. And uh, let's say, for example, I'm going to do this. All right. So one... Uh, two and three. Now there's probably more, but this is what I know of so far. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that out. All right, so one of them is the firmware. All right, another one is the drivers, and another one is applications. And what we're going to do, I'm going to just kind of move this real quick out of the way. I'm going to move that over here. There we go. Sorry about this. There. All right. Um, let's go here to that so that way you can see what we're doing here. There we are. And sorry, I'm a perfectionist. So let's just, there we go. Ah, oh, you little punk. All right. Screw it. I'll just, ah, work with me. <laughs> uh, I hate this. I hate this mouse. It's way overly sensitive. Screw it. All right. So, the firmware we're not messing with. We're not having anything to do with anything as far as that's concerned. Uh, let's see, do that, do that, there we go. And so this is the firmware aspect of this and the driver aspect of this is for hardware, for those who create hardware, all right? There we go. All right, and let's uh, maximize that. So that way, there. Hardware companies in general, they are the ones who create the firmware. The firmware is what you would upgrade your or update your BIOS with. So if you have ever worked with Windows in the past and you've ever come across, hey, you've got a Windows update, you need to update your firmware. Well, your BIOS is what you're updating. And the firmware, or, or I'm sorry, the BIOS contain, can contain the EFI and the legacy. There is one caveat to this, though. In 2020, Intel, 2020, Intel removed legacy from BIOS. That is important to know. That means that it, the BIOS only has the EFI. 
they have announced this. This is all over. You can actually do a search. I'm going to open this up and let you see this. You can say uh, Intel removes legacy BIOS. BIOS support. And when you do a search for this, and of course, you're going to find all kinds of links to, to all of this. I mean, it goes on and on. And the point is, is that that's what they announced and had been announcing for years until they finally did it. AMD has mentioned slightly that they're going to be doing this, but there's no info as to them actually doing this yet. From what I understand, uh, the Mac has already had EFI for ages, and I don't even think they've ever used 16-bit boot. I think they've always been EFI based. So Mac doesn't have to worry about um, legacy at all. Now, so that means that the firmware and drivers are created by the actual companies that make the motherboards, uh, the, you know, any kind of devices that utilize these. Now, there are two kinds of drivers. What I'm talking about in this case is drivers from hardware manufacturers. There's another drivers section that goes along with your applications, and we will get to that. And in fact, I'm going to put that as a sub here. And that's important um, in reference to this here, okay? So what we are creating is an application. I'm going to go ahead and make us do this. We're making an application, and in our case, this is for an EFI-based operating system boot loader. That is what we are creating. That's what this whole series is about. That is the application. And in this case, it's boot x, well, x64.efi. Okay? Now, drivers, in this case, is when we go to create our operating system, and we end up doing this. So I'm going to say that. And by the way, let's use brown in this case. And I'm going to do this and this. Ah, you little punk. There. There we go. And from here, um, let's say, go here. This will load what we call our kernel. All right, um, I'm gonna make that this color. Yeah, let's make that orange, there we go. And this real here will load our kernel, but we can also load our actual kernel drivers. So I'm gonna make another link for that. And we're just gonna say here, and we're just gonna do that and that, hey. Punk. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and put that in there like this. Drivers. And we're going to say kernel drivers. All right. And that is where these drivers talk to the kernel, and the kernel talks to uh, the uh, EFI interface, but it's the runtime driver interface. All right, so I'm going to save this out and kind of share what that is. So let me go ahead and back this up. And uh, this is uh, the EFI. There we go. Uh, not EFI. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to say new and try this again because this is slightly different. So let's go ahead and black this out. There we go. It's just easier for me to, to see my screen. All right. So the EFI in general has three different stages to it or sections to it. You have the runtime, you have the runtime, you have the boot services, and you have the OS loader. Well, the OS loader is actually part of the boot services. So technically, that's kind of what that is there. Uh, 
So I'm just going to make that a different color so to, to show that it is different, slightly different. So these two are your actual, like what we're dealing with here. Now, you boot your boot services, load your o operating system. Okay, and we'll make that red. And from here, now this is your EFI. So I'm going to do that as a different color. This is your actual boot x64 EFI. All right, so this is your BIOS. Let's say this is your BIOS. It has the runtime and it has your boot services and it loads after when you first turn your computer on, it's looking for this file and it loads this. And here it says, okay, well in here we call the runtime and the boot services to load our kernel. We already know about the kernel. When you go to exit this here, then you do not have access to this any longer. This shuts off, but you still have access to the runtime. So when you go to load your kernel, you actually can utilize what's in the runtime. And that is key to running an operating system. So when you transfer control to your kernel and you say exit the boot services, then you tell your kernel, well, here's the information we need from the hardware and we're going to be able to have access to these runtimes. So for example, graphics. You can still have access to the graphics and certain timer functions from the runtime at this point once you get to the kernel. And that is pretty much it. Um, you know, kernel access. So, all right. So, I hope this kind of gives an explanation, uh, and at least an overall on how this works. Um, you know, it's this is a very complex subject. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. So um, if you have, have any questions, um, you can get a hold of me on my Discord. I do have actual Discord. And in fact, if you would like to see that, go here to Tuts, scroll down, and there's the link to my Discord. So you can actually ask me questions and see how this actually works. And um, yeah, I'm sorry if this seems to drag on and it, it might be tedious. But this is info that's kind of needed to know. And as you ask questions, as we come across this, I'll try to answer it best I can. Um, all right. Well, I guess I will see you on the next tutorial.